Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ian Buckley, Managing Director of Prima Software. And I'm joined today by Terry Thurgood, our BI Director here at Prima Software. Hi. Many of you, many of you will be familiar with uh, Terry's Vantage uh, product, which is, of course, um, one of our um, product suite right now um, since the, the merger two years ago, would you believe, Terry? I know. Where did the time go? Um, so what we're um, here today for is to uh, kick off our three-part webinar series on unlock unlocking the power of Prima Vantage. So with with business becoming um, even more challenging over the last few months, I think it's really important that as a dealer community, um, we look to bring intelligence driven from our data into our everyday decision making and sales process. So we're going to be looking at really um, how do we get under the bonnet of what's going on in your system. Um, that's anything from automation um, an automation of uh, reports, customer facing reports, right through to performance analysis and obviously looking at the gap analysis and trends within the customer base. So i.e. how we can sell more to our existing customers and also spot any potential new opportunities. So today's session uh, is the kickoff session and we're going to be exploring uh, mastering the job management, which is the scheduling within Prima Vantage. So we're going to look at exploring the job builder, eliminating those repetitive tasks that take up time and effort that can be automated. We're going to be looking at saving time with uh, the batch automation of setting up these reports and outputs for both your sales team and for your uh, existing customers that have bespoke report requirements. And we're also going to be looking at how we automate the workflow with a bit of um, scheduling in there as well. Okay. Um, and also, um, we're, we're going to take a little look at how we can simplify complex business reviews and proposals through uh, using the templates that are available within the uh, Prima Vantage product. Okay, so that's enough for me. Um, over to you, Terry, to uh, kick off the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, thank you, Ian. Um, I'll I'll try and keep this as brief as possible. I'd I'd like to emphasise this is not a a, a training session. Um, we we are delighted to offer demos to people that aren't using the system and full training to those that are. This is more just to whet your appetite as to what the system can do. So we will be skipping over features quite quickly. Hope to get done in 15 minutes um, so you'll stay awake. And we've split this up into three um, webinars, as Ian explained. Um, the first one, you need to see the first one to understand the second and third one, really. And the first one is the driest one, unfortunately. It is about the features of the system rather than us showing you lovely pretty pictures about what's going on in your uh, in your data. Um, but you, if you see all three um, webinars, you'll 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 see why. There is a mixed variety of people on on this. Um, I, I'd like to thank everyone that's attended, but there are uh, some people that don't use the product. Um, so you you will probably um, see things that you don't really uh, understand in full context. Um, a lot of you are very familiar with the portals, which is which we don't have a webinar on currently, but we are seriously considering doing one um, because we felt the portals were very well used. And the reason for these three webinars is to show you things we don't think people are using. Um, however, we, we may slot a fourth one in um, to, to go over the portals. And for those not using um, Prima Vantage, um, that might be very beneficial. But if you are interested, we have my very glamorous assistant, Chris Gear, who um, is, is going to be delight, delighted to take any inquiries, uh, provide demos or provide training uh, for any features that you would like to know more about or even help us get you set up with them. So anyway, without, without further ado, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. Um, we're, we're not really going to be doing a Q&A session here. Um, please feel free to put your questions in the webinar chat. Um, and if um, if you do have any inquiries, just contact contact um, the main Prima help desk or um, Chris.gear, that's G W E R at PrimaSoftware.co.uk, 
and we'll be delighted to uh, give you as much time as you want to explain the features in full. Okay, so I'm going to jump in. So as, as Ian explained, we are going to look at the, the rather deserted screen, which is the job builder. Um, just for those that have never seen it, we have a full, a full system full of lovely graphical portals. Um, and this is where a lot of Vantage is consumed, and rightly so. Um, but we do feel that some of these great features uh, in the remaining tabs can be left behind. Um, so this is this is where we are going to start. So the job builder, if you imagine the job builder is your classic reports menu in in um, in your ERP system. It's the, it's the equivalent of that. So if you go into reports and you can select um, select reports that you um, would would like to run. At its absolute simplest form, the job builder is you find the report that you like to run, select it, fill in the parameters, or you put a, 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 an account code in or an account manager name, uh, and run it. Um, that's that's the, um, the the simplest form of it. But we we have this job builder. Uh, it's kind of a report uh, a report menu on steroids, um, and that's really what I like to show you today. So don't worry too much, as I said, about the actual use of the features, just try to absorb what, what it could potentially do for your company. Um, and the reports are broken into sections here. So we have covers, sales review reports, sales proposal, etc., cetera, um, company reports, and all sorts of other sections, okay? So that's quite a lot of reports. So firstly, a feature that is, is very little used. Um, if, you, if you have a couple of reports in here that you like, um, you can't remember what they are. You click on this little cog here and you can select a report. Say so I like that one and I like that one and click save. And that puts it in your favourites. So if you click favourites only now, it just shows you your favourite reports and you'll see there's one I put in earlier. Okay, so if we turn, turn the favourites off, that just comes back. Okay, you can also search by keywords. So if I type the word top in here and click Filter. That's all the all the reports of word topping. Um, very useful little feature. Um, up the top we have defaults, and I'll come to those in a moment. So the beauty of this uh, report builder. So if you, for example, I won't be running hardly any reports today, but I'll just showing how they would be run. Um, for example, if you want to look at the top items a customer buys from, you'd select that report there, and you'll see that it's asking for an account code, a start date and an end date. And it's pre-filled some of these in, which you can change. So this, this would show the top 100 items uh, for a specific customer. Now, this is perhaps where your typical report menu uh, finishes in, in your ERP system, because you would select a report, fill in the parameters, click next, and maybe you choose to send it to email and you click run. The beauty of uh, Prima Vantage is you can run multiple reports. So we might want a customer order analysis as well, uh, a, um, a key performance indicator report. And as you can see, it's asking for account code, account code, account code. It's asking for dates and dates, and they're all common. So a couple of useful features. If you select reports and you've forgotten to add account codes, there's a great feature here to search for an account code. So we just put, put that one in just for the sake of argument. And we can put a start date in and we can put an end date in and we can retrospectively apply them to the reports or if we clear the section and we've already pre-populated them and we click on a few reports you will see that they are applied for you if you mess it up you can apply it from there so a very nice easy um easy way of um adding defaults into reports. And as you say, as I say, you can, a really important feature is you can run multiple reports in one go. Okay, so the the next thing I would like to just demonstrate to you is let's let's pretend we're doing a, uh, a sales review. And in this, in this section, we're gonna do it the hard way. As we get into the next webinars, I'm gonna show you the easy way of doing it, um, which is really comes for the automation and that making these reviews available to the rest of the company. So if we just, pick a, a default account code and we put a, a start date in, let's put the 1st of August and an end date. And we're going to have a front cover 
Um, we want a customer multiple analysis. I'll cover the word multiple in a minute. A top items, an order analysis, a returns analysis, and a back cover. So what we've done here, we've got six reports. And as, as you can see, there's lots of reports that you can use. You've got six reports that when run, they're going to end up in a single PDF file. And it's going to cover off the, the, um, the details that you have selected for each report. OK. One other feature that I haven't shown you is instead of a date, we put a period in. So it's a direct equivalent of a date. So we could say start of three, four months ago to end of last full month. So that directly translates to the 1st of June to the end of August, OK, because that's the start of three, four months ago to the end of last full month. Now, the reason we use these, and I'm going to reply those, the reason we use these, if we ever save this as a job and want to run it in three months' time, if it's got a date in, it's going to run it for the same date period. But realistically, if you want to run a sales review, you're going to run, want to run it for the most recent period. So these, these date periods are extremely useful. And there's lots of, lots of, different, lots of different ones uh, available to you. So you can do start of last full month, or I've got that one, uh, start of this week, start of this month. Um, end of last week. There's a lot of flexibility in the dates and they're really, really useful when it comes to save jobs. OK, so let's um, let's take this a, a little bit further now. So we have our our sales review here. As we got here in the menu, we can change specific things on each one. We don't have to have the same dates across all reports. So this one we could actually say I want this for six months. This one we could have for, for 12 months if we want it. Um, and so on. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of flexibility. And just very briefly, the word multiple, you'll see that a lot in in the menu here. And what it means is you can summarize and group any word, any report with the word multiple in. There's a summarize by option. So you can summarize it by, in the case of this one, product range or department or cost center or delivery address. So if we ran just this customer multiple analysis report, it would show you um, Everything they bought grouped by product range that so put all the paper together, it put all the furniture together, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If I simply change that to delivery address, it would put all of the products that were de de delivered to each, each delivery address. The other thing you can do, another clever little trick with Vantage Point, is you can have the same reporting twice. Now that's obviously stuck at the bottom, so I'm going to move it up. Another little feature. So you can see the same report twice and you're thinking, well, that's just silly, isn't it? Why do I want the same report twice? But one of them is by delivery address and one of them by product range. So even though it's the same report, it will be a completely different, different output. OK, and you've also got detail level. So you can do summarized details, full details or summary only. So it's it's how much information goes into the report. Is it just a table of spend by delivery address or do you want to see what they bought um, or do you want to see every line they bought? So there's a, an awful lot of flexibility within one report. Um, you've got an awful lot of flexibility um, to, to change how that report outputs. Do you want to show the contract flag for each line, yes or no? Do you want to base it on invoices or orders? So there's an, an awful lot of these reports have a lot of different questions. And, and sometimes we, we invite um, support queries to say, well, I, I need to do this. Is there a report that matches? Because sometimes it's not always obvious, but we know and we can help you, guide, guide you, even if even if you've got the right report, you may not have the right parameters set. OK, so let's assume we're all happy with that. We click the next. On the left hand side, I have what you called your shopping basket. This is what you want to check out. So you have these reports when you when you run it, it's going to run these reports. OK, but before we do, we've got to decide what we want to do with it. There's no point in running it um, and just sending it to nowhere. So we've got output options and how do you want what do you want to handle with the um, how do you want to handle the reports? So the very first question it asks is, do you want to merge them all into a single PDF or do you want them as separate PDFs? So in this case, it is a review. We want to merge it all into a single PDF. And it says, what do you want to call it? And I'm just going to call it sales review. OK, and do I want to create a table of contents? Yes, I do. And where do I want to put it? I want to put it on page two. So between the front cover and the customer multiple analysis, it's going to create a table of contents for you. It just makes it look a bit more slick. Okay. Next, in the next um, webinar, we are going to be showing what sales reviews look like. OK, but this is just showing you how to, you know, what, what can be done. So the next thing is, where do we want to send it? Do we want to send it to email? Or do we want to send it to screen or a very, very 
uh, lightly used feature and it's more of a, a system feature which again will be explained further down the line is send it to upload so basically we send it to vantage point and store it in the uploads tab um, typically we turn that off and we use that for other things but if you want to send it to email you have the ability to just type an email in there so okay. And then it's just put a default subject in. I, I'm because I'm a little bit lazy. I just copy and paste it in there. And then obviously you can write your message there. Um, now that's ready to go. So if I press run job, that will run that review, merge them all together and email it to me. OK, if I don't want it emailed, I can send it to screen. So once again, I can press run job. That will go away into the background. It runs it all of its live data and that will pop up to screen that's fantastic so far so good but what if we want to keep it and use it again in the future so we have the option to save it so we can run it first and then save it afterwards or we can just save it without ever running it we don't have to run it so again because i'm lazy what do i want to call it as copy and i paste i'm going to call it sales review webinar excuse my typing and i'm going to click save job Right, so I purposely made a left an oversight there because I haven't filled all the parameters in. So it's checking in the previous page, there's missing information. And as you can see, it's highlighted it in yellow. So I'm just going to fill those in. It's kind of a check. If you don't fill it all in, it can't run it. So it doesn't waste your time. OK, so if I click next now and click save. It's happy. OK, so what have we done here? We've saved the sales review. Now, if I go back to Job Builder, obviously just wipes it all out. But we could do that with any of these reports. Yeah, we can set any of these reports up. So just as a stupid example, low margin lines. Yeah, so we could put a low margin lines report in there for today. Maximum margin. So anything below 5% margin, click next, email, send it to all of your team leaders. Yeah and save the job in fact let's just do it old email address habits die hard okay and mr lazy again so i've just created a job called low margin lines and we're going to pretend that there's a copy going to all of your team leaders and i'm going to save job okay so that's how quick it is when you know what you want that's how quick it is to set a, a save job up okay so if i now go to save jobs you will see amongst all the others in here there are two new save jobs these are the two that i set up okay so what is the save jobs menu? It is anything you have created and press the save button and given a name to. It will appear in here. You have a few options. So you have a, a checkbox at the end here. So you can check multiple ones or just a single one. So if I wanted to run the low margin lines report, I can just tick it and click run job. Or I can just click on it. It reloads it into the job builder. As you can see, it's, it's there as I saved it. But I might want to change it to 10%. I click next. I can run that ad hoc, but it won't save it. It won't save over the top. If I click save, it will overwrite those changes. Or I can click save job as. So low margin lines 10. Click save. So now we have three. Okay, so very flexible. Um, so let's say now, for example, the low margin lines report, um, we want to schedule it. We want that to go at half past five every night. So we click on the clock. We click new schedule and once again i'm not going to go into all the features of the scheduling but it's pretty flexible you can pretty much send anything at any time and repeat it as often as you like um but i'm going to tick weekly and i want it monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and i want it to start from today and i want to run it from 17:45. and i'm going to click save and that is it Every day at 17.45, Monday to Friday, you will get your low margin lines report um, pop into the inbox of whoever you scheduled it for. That's how simple creating a basic job and scheduling it is. 
What I would like to say is we do offer that service for you. It is a managed service vantage point. Um, if you don't understand or feel confident enough to do it, put a support call in um, via the support tab at the top here and say, I'd like some help scheduling some jobs. We will do that for you. We'll handhold you, train you to do it. So I'm going to remove that schedule just by clicking delete. Okay. You'll notice it's now unscheduled because there's no color on the, uh, the icon. Um, what I'd like to show you now is we can we can tick multiple jobs, we can delete them, or something even more clever, we can create a batch. So let's say these three jobs that we've created, we want to run all at once. So what are batches? Batches is another menu, but batches are jobs that you want to run all at once. So a very good use for this would be month end reports that you send to customers. You would wait till you do your month end and then you would want to run them all all at one go you might have a hundred different reports that go out to customers um, you put them all in a batch and you can run the batch so let's create a batch so we tick the three that we want in our batch and we click create batch give it a name and i'm just going to call it month end month end webinar and click save that simple go to the batches menu month end webinar three jobs in it if I click on the batch name, it tells me what's in it. I can remove jobs from it by clicking unlink, or I can run them. So I just reset there. Month end webinar, if I press the go button, that will run all three of those jobs and it runs them as they are saved. So whatever email addresses or whatever settings you have got in each one of those individual jobs, they run as they are saved. They don't interfere with each other or anything like that. It runs the job as if you go to each individual job and run it. Okay. It's a really good time saver. And the beauty of um, batches is you can schedule those as well. So for month end function, you might some days you might finish month end on day two. Some days it might be day six. So for those, you would perhaps not schedule them and you just press the go button afterwards. But if you want to schedule it, it works in exactly the same way. You click new schedule, create your schedule and click save. What will happen then is when the schedule runs, it will run every job inside the batch okay very very powerful but very simple um, and as i say you can also if you add a new job so let's say we do this one and create another one called low margin minus 15 so i've just opened that job up click next i'm going to call this low margin lines 15 and i'm going to click save job as so see how quickly i've created another job from an existing job so i've used the job as like a template okay but that one's not in a batch. You can see it's not in the batch because it's got batch count naught. If you click on the number, it tells you what batch it's in. If I do that and click add to batch, what batch do I want to add it to? Month in webinar, save. OK, so now that has now got four jobs in it. So very, very, very powerful. Um, and the the time you, you can save by automating your reports um, is is enormous. Um, some some uh, some dealers re do more reporting than others, um, but we, I've, I've literally seen 500, um, 500 uh, reports. One of my dealers had 500 reports uh, running at the end of each month, and it was all in all in one batch, believe it or not. Um, OK, so that's a very quick overview of the um, job builder, save jobs and batches. One last thing I'd just like to whet your appetite with is so i said there's a hard way of um of doing a customer review and the same thing works for proposals as well and, and next next webinar we will show you actual reviews and proposals and these these this is when it becomes a lot more exciting um but so the hard way is to put an account code in select the reports that you want to use put a front and back cover on and run it um that requires a bit of thinking and if you spread that across you know, five or six account managers, they'll all do it differently. Um, some won't bother and, and others, you know, they'll, they'll all make a very different job of it. And we've learned the hard way from this. And this is why we created templates. So templates works in two stages is one, we have to build the template nine times out of 10. This is done in conjunction with our support because we go into it and know exactly, we help you build the exact review you want. You might want a simple review or a complex review, um, but we, we help you build it. And once the template is built, we can then distribute it to the account managers or, or anyone that uses um, Vantage for consumption. OK, so I'm going to show you how to build a template and I'm going to shortcut it to the, the home page here. 
I'm not going to run it. That's that's next next webinar. Okay. So let's let's just um, decide what we want. So we're going to create a, a simple sales review. So we want a front cover. We want a customer multiple analysis. We want a top items, an order analysis, a returns analysis, and a back cover. Okay. Right. So I am going to I'm going to arbitrarily just to keep it simple. I'm going to make this a three month review like that and I'm going to apply those dates like that so you see all the dates are populated but you can see still that there are some fields that are unpopulated and I'm going to leave them blank on purpose you'll note that the label for these fields is all identical and this is a key to how this works okay so where the labels are identical in a template that treats it as one question so in here we have we have five five times we have to fill the account code in okay so i'm going to click next and i'm going to send it to email but i'm going to leave it blank and i'm going to call this simple sales review three month okay. and i'm going to merge it i'm going to create table of contents OK, so you'll notice I've purposely left the email blank and I'm going to click create template now. Now, if I if I click run job, it would have moaned at me because I haven't filled these in, but it's allowed me to create a template of those. And these appear in the template section. And here it is, simple sales review three months here. So again, this is typically what we, we do for you. I'm going to click on the settings and I'm gonna, it says visible to and we can make it visible to any of your users based on what kind of user they are. Um, so we can distribute it to users, okay? And the other thing, the key here is show on homepage. Okay, so click save. Right. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to the homepage now. As you can see, that has appeared in the templates menu. So I want you to imagine um, account managers don't have this top menu. That is typically the difference. We don't give top menu to account managers unless it's specifically asked for. OK, but what we can do is give them access to reports within it via templates. So an account manager, if he wants to run a simple sales review, will click on there. And all he has to do is put the account code in. On there, put the presentation title in put his email address in and click run template. And that is it. So he can build himself a sales review with a very, very limited amount of clicks. So we also have the option we could have a, an advanced template that looks at 12 months. So all of these are templates that are um, currently set up. OK, so these these are very, very powerful. And a template, I'll stress a template can have any reporting from the job builder. Although typically you wouldn't want to run a management report from a template, well, you may do, but typically these are more consumed for producing uh, front end um, uh, information or, or looking at um, information uh, about a customer. So it, it would be, you know, show me all the things they bought. So it'd be internal, but it would be about one customer. That's typical use, but not restricted to. OK. Um, so just one last thing I wanted to show you just to prove it all works. Uh, before we go um so here's a here's a report here it's uh and it's a, a daily and month to date um sales report click next screen run that's how simple it is now these reports that's opened it up in a new tab these reports are run live so what it's doing it's going off it's running this live against your prima data and it's going to come back and drop it on the screen. And there it is. So if we just zoom in a little bit here. So this is the um, this is the report. So this is just showing um, month to date and today by customer um, sales profit and margin. OK, so it's a very basic report. Um, people people run this ad hoc to screen or you can schedule it. Um, but it just it just shows how easy it is to to run reports from the job builder when you understand what you need and you have a lot of flexibility about where um, 
where they go. So, um, so um, just before I finish, um, I've got a question in, in here. Um, there are so many reports, I never know which one to choose. Is there an index that outlines what information each report contains? Um, the answer to that is uh, no. Um, we, we could potentially produce a, a cheat sheet if, if it was felt uh, important, but the only reason we haven't is some of these reports, um, some of these reports can do so many different things in one report um, that there are um, a lot of a lot of different options. There is our help section here, um, which th there's a lot of a uh, lot of useful information in in the help section. Um, but there is not it doesn't go into individual reports, but it does it does explain how to use the product in, in detail. It's, it's essentially done what I've I've done today. OK, um, but in terms of specific reports, um, we, 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 we certainly could, um, but we do encourage um, solving your business problems for you. So if you come to us and say, I have a have an issue with, you know, I, well, not an issue. I want to know this. We will say, oh, you need this report. Would you like it scheduled or um, et, et cetera? So um, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think um, if, uh, as I say, if there are any uh, any any questions, um, we will we will respond to them um, uh, in in off offline for you. So please feel free to drop any questions into the Q and A. Um, but I'm going to leave it there. I respect that the fact that um, we've been on for nearly um, you know 40 minutes now, and we're supposed to do 15. So um, I think I'll just hand back to Ian if he's uh, if he's still awake. Um, to, to say goodbye to all of you. Thank well, you. Thanks, Deloitte, Terry. I was uh, a little bit cold, so I've got the hoodie on now, but uh, wide awake. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. As you can see, um, it's, a, it's a Swiss Army knife for your reporting needs. Um, that's one of Terry's catchphrases, actually. Um, but, you know, there's, a, there's an awful lot there, and you're probably thinking to yourself, I didn't know it did that. And you know, that's why, you know, we kind of one of the points of us putting on uh, sessions like this, just to give you an insight into some of the things you actually can achieve with the product. So um, thank you for joining us and uh, we hope to see you in the next session. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, so we um, we come to our um, second webinar um, of Prima Vantage. Um, Thank you all very much um, for joining. Um, so today um, we're going to be showing uh, customer facing vantage point resources. So anything that um, you want to actually put in front of your customer, um, whether it be a proposal or a, uh, a review. And also we're going to be looking at um, reports that are about customers. So you may wish to look at certain information before you talk to a customer, but you certainly wouldn't want to put it in front of them. So um, there is also that um, reports, those reports as well. So um, I'm I'm going to jump straight in, uh, try and try and keep this moving this time. Um, as as before, um, if you have any questions, if you want to pop them into the chat. Um, we will try to answer them. If not, we'll get back to you afterwards. And also, um, if um, if you want to contact us direct and, and talk to us, you can do it by the Prima switchboard or um, my glamorous assistant, Chris Gear, will be very happy to talk to you and take your inquiries. Um, and she can be contacted contacted on chris.gear at primasoftware.co.uk. Now, I appreciate there may be some people that don't use Prima Vantage today, and there's probably some people on here that are sort of old hats. So hopefully there's a little bit for everybody. Um, and um, so I'll, I'll, I'll kick, kick off into the, um, into the demonstration. So, so hopefully um, you can all see that. Um, I'm sure Rob will let me know if he's, uh, if, if we're not. So Rob's, um, Rob's doing the uh, covering the management of the meeting in the background. So um, 
hopefully you can all see that. And I just very quickly like to touch on something that we did more extensively last week. Um, that is the job builder. This is where all of the reports are stored. And the specific area of the job builder we want to be talking about today is the, the covers, the sales review reports, proposal reports, and some customer reports. So these, these sections are all specifically to do with customer facing or information about customers. And the, the best use of um, Vantage for putting proposals or reviews in, in front of customers is to run multiple reports um, and merge them all together. Now we make that very easy. And again, last week uh, we covered it um, by the use of um, creating templates. So we offer that as part of our managed service. So we, we are very happy to speak to you about um, building a custom review based on the reports available, or even you can provide um, specifications and we can look at doing customized uh, reports. We can also include um, PDFs about your company and reviews. Uh, if you supply us that information, we can include it into your um, into your uh, system. OK, so firstly, a review, um, it can be a single report, but typically um, it, it's made up of multiple reports. Um, now, I'm not going to go too deeply into building reviews. Um, I want to really jump into the actual reports themselves um, today. Um, but for those those that remember, we we built a review last week. We merged it all together, and we ran it. We also uh, built a template, um, which is whereby you build a review, but you leave some of the information missing. You create a template and you shortcut it to your homepage, as shown here. And then when you want to run it, you just simply click it and you fill in the information that is missing. So it makes quite a complex tasks pretty simple. So we we won't dwell too much more on that. I'd like to jump straight into um, showing you what a review can look like. So if you just um, bear with me and I'll get the first one open and we make the screen a little bit larger. OK, so hopefully um, you can all see that. Um, so this is a review document. It's it's not specifically a standard review document because there's no such thing. It's just got some reports in it that we think are good reports, give you good talking points um, to um, to discuss with your customers. So firstly, I'd like to say the front cover, that is our standard front cover. Obviously, it has a generic logo on it. Um, the logo typically will be your logo and you can supply front covers to us if you want to get them designed in a4 pdf format in landscape we will incorporate them into your system for you so that is all all stuff we can do to customize so that's the front cover um moving on one of the uh features of prima vantage is we can build a table of contents so we build a review it scans through that review looks at all the looks at all the content and builds an index for you. So here we've built a table of contents showing exactly what's in the review and that's all done automatically. You, it's just a checkbox, <coughs> excuse me. So um, moving down onto the first report. So we have a product range analysis report. So for this customer, um, we are looking at spend by product range and it's just graphically shown there. And it just gives a good indication as to what, what this customer is buying. Um, moving on from that, we have exactly the same information, but in a table format. So it's showing uh, what the customer's buying and percent of sales shows what, what, what they're buying on core, number of order lines from each product range. And because of the way we ran this report, the third page of this report and the fourth and the fifth, etc., actually goes and shows you exactly what they bought shows you how many times they bought it, how much they've spent. So this this particular part of the review um, is is a breakdown um, of 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 what what the customers bought by product range. Now, I've as you can see, it goes on a bit. I've chopped 
there, there was, was about 12 pages of that. I chopped it off um, just to make the report a bit uh, easier to see. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a great way of just uh, talking to your customer about what they're buying, discussing certain products, whether they're, um, whether they're on core or not, etc. The core flag is optional. You don't have to show them what's on core. So next, um, we have a top 50 report. So in here, this is the top 50 products that this customer has bought within the date range that you specified um, when you set the template. So as you can see, it's, it's mixed between different product ranges. Uh, you can see bespoke printing um, features very heavily. And it, again, it tells you how many times they bought it, the quantity and the value. OK, and that top 50, it could be top 10, top 5, top 500. You choose that. That's what that's all configurable when you set the template up. OK, and at the end, there's a summary just telling you um, that the top 50 is 31,605 out of 35,313. So top 50 has covered 89% 80, of the overall sales. It's just a, a little dashboard there for KPI. OK. And then moving on, we have um, customer order analysis. So this is uh, a breakdown of how we um, delivered it. So as you can see, a lot of this was direct delivery. And sorry, a lot of it was by van and the remainder was direct delivery. And there's full breakdown of how the orders uh, appeared there. And also we have the order source. So you can see where the orders came from. So you can see the email uh, formed 34% of the orders and not assigned. So this is this is poor data. So this is orders coming onto the system and they are not getting um, assigned an order source. Um, so this is demo data and um, the quality of it isn't um, isn't isn't ideal because there's a lot of orders gone on there without without an order source. And I, I personally think order source is important. Um, it's it's important to see uh, if, if, if it's your desire to get customers uh, coming in on the web, then um, that's something that you would like to discuss and, and see what percentage of the um, orders do come in via the web. Um, so we have. Um, the product range gap analysis here. So this is this is full gap analysis. So all the previous reports that I've showed you are what the customer has bought. It doesn't tell you anything about what the customer hasn't bought. Um, now this this report's a bit different because what it does it tells you what they're not buying as well. So the for example and the other thing we do we break it down into key ranges and normal ranges. So this customer. The key ranges are configurable, but this customer is actually buying from all key ranges, which is which is great. It's a good customer. Um, but as you look down at other ranges, you can see there's no clothing, there's no um, business gifts, no labels, legal and personal, uh, office planning. So there's there's always opportunities to find things to talk about, and also a little. Um, what this report does, it also loosely targets what they should be spending in each product range. And that is based on your overall sales as a dealer. So um, it, it it uses that as a scale. So um, this particular customer um, is a bit low on catering, for example. It's, it should be spending 4,100 on catering. But it, I wouldn't say it's 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 only a, a, a little bit down. It's still doing well on catering. What you're looking for is, for example, this one here, £231 spend on printer fax copier. Uh, their target's 1450 So I would say there's possibly an opportunity to speak to them about that. Um, if you want to discuss this offline, it can be a little bit of a confusing concept. We'd be very happy to arrange a, a chat for you to, to, to better understand the gap analysis. Okay. Moving on to the next one, we have a, a very nice key performance indicator. I'm not going to go into everything on this. It would take ages, um, but it, it basically looks across the last 12 months and looks at lots of different statistics about order sizes, return statistics, uh, delivery performance, etc. cetera. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great report for just trying to get an overview of what's going on with, with your customer. OK. Um, Another one I like is a 12 month summary. So again, this just gives you a top down view by month of spend by product range. So you can just scan across, see if there's any product ranges that have fallen off a cliff 
uh, or are doing exceptionally well. So, for example, you'll see that catering managed services has, has suddenly come online in the last six months, whereas it wasn't. Um, and there's, there's again, there's usually something in here to to talk about um, when when you're in front of a customer. Um, as I say, these reviews, you don't have to put the review in front of the customer. You can run the review. Very easy and very convenient to run the review. You can run the review before the um, before you go and see the customer. You don't have to show it to them, but it, it can give you some things to talk about. This one's a, a good one. Uh, contract list. So luckily for us, there's only a small contract for this customer. So it's easy to explain. So this report, and I'll be showing you another version of this in a minute. This report is looking at their contract, breaks it conveniently up into product ranges for you. And what's good about this, it tells you in the last three months, because this is what we've based it on, how well they've supported this contract. OK, so these these lines on the contract are not being supported at all. They haven't bought any. OK, but this top line, they've spent five hundred and thirty five pounds on it. They bought twenty five of them and that's seven times they bought it last order date and how many days ago. So it is a effectively a printout of a contract with the spend overlaid onto it. So you can see which lines are being supported. So it's a nice, nice little feature. OK, now that is the um, that is a sales review and that is not an untypical sales review. Um, so um, I think um, there are lots of um, I'm just trying to close this. No. Bear with me a moment. It's not wanting to let me out of this. There it is. That's better. Right. Um, as I say, there are lots of different um, lots of different options for um, for looking at the sales review. So I'd just like to go on to another one that uh, that I like. Um, and this one is is not used anywhere near enough um, for, for my liking. Um, so a proposal. So what's the concept of a proposal? This is potentially someone you've never dealt with before, or this is someone you are dealing with and you want to readjust their prices. So a proposal is largely um, largely largely based on um, quotations okay so you put a quotation into your system into prima and in that quotation you will notice that there's the option to put a competitor's price in so if you put a competitor's price in so let's say it's a prospect you go out and maybe you get their invoices get some prices you you put all of their prices in if you're really good you can put the quantity that they bought in and then you put your price in for quotation. And then we have a template set up for quotations that allows you just to very simply type in the customer name and the quotation number, and it will print this document for you. So put a, a front and back cover on. Now, this is a great use of, if you want to supply your own PDF document about your company, this is the place to put it. Yeah, we can incorporate it in as a flat PDF. It's not part of a report, but it, it's, it, it can go in um, here and it can be, you know, it can be some sort of promotional material about your company. It could even be your terms and conditions. But we typically put that after the proposal. But let's dive into the into the proposal um, part here. So this is the first page of the proposal. And what this does, it summarizes uh, in this dashboard how much they're going to save if they move across to you based on what they have spent. So we put some headline figures and then some underlying KPIs in here. So what we did, we, we got a sample quote. We put competitors prices in and put some quantities in. And this is what came out. So if this customer moves to you based on this quotation, they're going to save £149. OK, um, their actual spend was £927. And if they move to you, they're going to spend £777. So they're going to make a 16 percent saving. Yeah. We also do the basket saving. So what basket is, is assuming the quantity of everything is one rather than the quantities you put in. 
So we say, well, if you bought one of everything you gave us price for, you're going to save £71 or 13% overall. So it's it's a it's a, a non-weighted saving. OK, there are 35 lines in the proposal and there are 35 price reductions. So we break the um, we break the uh, proposal down into um, product ranges as well. So we show by product range what the actual spend was. So what did they spend with your competitor? And what the new spend would be and the saving and it shows you savings by product range as well okay so you can see where the savings are and then optionally um you can display the actual savings against the actual products i don't know if i can zoom in a bit more here um move that out of the way yep here it is Sorry, the, the, the Zoom meeting is overlaying the Chrome controls, so uh, it's getting a bit uh, bit confused. So if you can see that, so you'll see for KF27017, um, the current price is 4.95. If they move to you, it's £4.10, and you are displaying everything about everything there. They bought two and how much they're going to save. So it's a, it's a very, very nice way of presenting your proposition. And as I say, put a nice front and back cover on it, put some nice information about your company, and it's extremely simple to produce a very professional document. Okay, so moving swiftly on. So we're going to now look at three of perhaps my favorite little reports for just looking at a customer, but you wouldn't necessarily put these in front of the customer. So let's make this full screen. So the first one, when you look at these reports, if you actually want to know what this report's about, it's always best to re read this centre column. So it tells you the date range, the customer, what it's summarised by. So it's summarised by product range, it's showing profit and it's based on invoices. OK, so what this one, this is a year on year profit variance for one customer across all product ranges. So this shows Adesis and Tate's product bespoke printing. So let's pick on a nice big juicy one. So this year, the bottom column, the, the greens are showing where you're up and the reds are showing where you're down in profit. OK, so and the darker the green or the darker the red, the, the worst, the worst or better the scenario. So in, in terms of bespoke print, we're £10,000 down on profit. OK. And you can see that some of these months are um, quite a way down. These are these are up, but um, that's that's showing you where the variances are by product range. OK, so it's a nice one just to scan through again before you go in. And then at the bottom, it shows you the overall variance year on year. OK. Let's uh, have a look at this next one. So this is a, um, a contract overview on steroids. So what this one is, is showing is um, the contract. You'll note it looks very, very similar to what you saw in the sales review, with the exception we've shoehorned profit and margin in here. So you can see, again, looking at the top for this customer based on the last three months, this is how much profit you've made on each contract line and what the margin was. OK, so there's an Excel version of this as well for you to look at, but it gives you gives you a good overview of what's what's going on with a contract. OK. And to the next one. This is another nice one. We have a customer overview. So again, looking at the center here for this customer in this in this date range, and we've got two levels of summary. We're summarizing by product range and then by product code. Based on sales, it could be profit if you chose to, and we have invoices, okay? So this is showing every product they bought and showing it across 12 months. Now it looks like quite a lot, but there's a lot of information here. You can get a real good, it, because of the way it's, um, 
it's put together, you can get a very, very quick and good overview of what's happening. Um, it puts the most profitable or the most valuable lines at the top. Um, and as you can see, well, perhaps computer accessories is a bit sporadic, but if we go to perhaps something like paper, don't buy paper. Okay, we'll go somewhere else. Furniture. Um, as you can see, um, they had a good good spread of furniture. Um, perhaps janitorial is a better example. Now, I would say that the janitorial for this, if I was looking at this, is, is not very consistent. So perhaps there's a story there as, of selling more janitorial to them because we're not getting some nice, strong, consistent monthly sales across janitorial. Um, but this, this is one that Personally, I think everyone should run before they go and see a, a customer. So, um, yes, so that's that one. Now, if I exit out of there and go back into here. So those are just a handful of the reports that you can run. Um, Next week, um, we are going to be concentrating on uh, company reports. So this is looking at all customers rather than a single uh, customer. We're going to be looking at um, ways of, of comparing all customers um, on, a, on a much more sort of a top down view. And there's some very nice uh, reports that we're going to be showing you in there next week. So hopefully I've kept this brief and just given you a quick overview. Uh, remember, all of this can be extremely simply, all of everything I've shown you is pretty much um, stuff that's here in these uh, templates. So you can have them set up. They're very simple to get access to um, and they can be run. And some quite complex documents can be run just by clicking there, filling in the account code, for example, title and start and end date. And you you'll end up with um, a lot of you know fairly fairly comprehensive and complex documents, and they can be made available to all of your team as well. So you know that everyone is working consistently. So if you say when I go out um, when I go out and see somebody, everyone get, takes the same review out. Everyone can be trained to have the similar discussions. So um, I'm going to wind it up there. Um, I think um, if there are any um, if there are any questions, we will be monitoring the Q&A and we'll be uh, getting back to you. And if you would like to book a session to discuss your options uh, for the um, for the, the front end uh, reporting and, and templates, um, then please do get in touch. We, we love to be able to help make the product more useful to you. And I, I hope it's been useful. I think there's probably a few seasoned people that uh, have seen all of this before. And there's possibly, you know, some people that think, oh, I didn't know it did all of that. So anyway, I'm going to finish up there. Um, thank you ever so much for joining. And um, we will speak to you next week. Thank you very much. Goodbye. So um, this is uh, webinar three. So um, in this webinar, um, we are going to be talking about the company reports, management reports, if you like, and we're going to brush on a, a very nice marketing report. And also there is a couple of new reports that I am going to be showing you that will be made live in your system um, by the morning. OK, so um, that's uh, something that no one will have ever seen uh, so far. OK, so um, I just would like to very quickly recap um, what we've uh, done before, and we will then um, go straight into where uh, where I want to continue from. So I'm just going to share my screen very quickly. So as you will see, um, we've spent a lot of time looking at the job builder uh, in in webinar one, uh, save jobs and batches, and we talked about scheduling and templates. We didn't really touch on any reports. We just talked about how to uh, use the system. And in webinar two, we touched on front facing reports, customer reports, if you like. Um, and we went into a quite a bit of detail about that. So for this this webinar, we are going to be talking about company reports. And as you can see, I'll make this a little bit larger. There is quite an extensive collection of company reports. 
And a lot of these reports are quite flexible, so they can be running lots of different ways. Um, anywhere where you see the word multiple, if I just select one of them by clicking the plus button, multiple means the summarize by options are multiple summarize by options. So you can you can group something by customer, product range, or account manager, or if we select another one, the summary type, there's lots more options. So multiple means you have multiple options to group the report. And um, so you if you actually combine summary one and summary two, there's there's probably well over 50 or 60 different combinations all in one report. OK, if anybody um, needs any assistance um, on any of these, I'd just like to reiterate, contact us uh, through the switchboard or through your online support link. Um, you can click support in Vantage Point and send a link, uh, a message through to us there. Or you can contact Chris Gear at chris.gear at primasoftware.co.uk. Um, we'd be delighted to help you and get the most out of your system. OK, so without further ado, I'm going to take you through a handful of these um, management reports. I'm not going to show you how to run them. Um, that's going to take too much time. Some of you will be familiar with them. I just want to whet your appetite for what what can be done. Um, if if you're interested or you have a requirement that you think, oh, that that might work, or even if even if we don't cover anything that that you um, that, that you see today, ask us the question. Uh, we may well have something for you. Okay. So I'm just going to share the first uh, report. So, as I say, I'm just going to be running through a selection of the management reports. We've handpicked a few that we like. Um, we've we've chopped them right down. Usually these are a lot longer, but we've chopped them down as well for you to make them um, typically single pages here um, to make them understandable for you. So what we have here is simply a 12 month profit report um, by customer. So for every one of your customers, and if you're just running it for an account manager, it'll only be the account managers on, on um, a particular patch. And I'd just like to reiterate, when you run a report up here, it tells you what the report is about, the report parameters. So it tells you what's included. So it's all customers, all account managers, all product ranges. OK, summarized by customer. Displaying profit against invoices. So if you're ever in doubt, most of the time that will tell you what's going into the report. This particular report can be run for sales or profit or sales, profit and margin. Um, it's it's very, very flexible, this report. You could run this by paper only. So we could be looking at profit by paper across the whole company. So if you want to see how paper is performing across your customers, you can do that. And another choice is show last year. So this report is looking at this year's turnover versus last year's or profit. Sorry, this year's profit versus last year's profit. And it's even color coding in deepening reds or greens where the profit is up or down. So if we pick a customer, let's find one here. Let's look at the umbrella shop. As you can see, they've had a good year. Um, they're actually year on year. They're only 50 odd pounds up. And you can see the start of the year they was up every month in profit. And then it's started to fall away. So. Looking at that, I would say that the uh, if I was analysing that account, I would say the, the profit has begun to fall away and you perhaps want to run another report um, that looks specifically at um, what products they're buying, how much profit you're making and see where the product where the profit has fallen away. Um, but this is a very, very flexible and useful report. OK, anyone that wants it, we can set it up as a template or we can schedule it for you. We can schedule it to go to account managers. So we've got very flexible solutions. For this report. OK, on to another one of my favourites. So again, 12 months, but not showing previous year this time. This one is showing two summary levels. As you'll see, we've got summary level one and summary level two. And you saw me brush on that at the beginning of the uh, webinar, uh, whereby um, we had lots and lots of options. But we, what we have chosen to do here Again, if you look at account manager or customers or product ranges, all. so that's everything going into this report. We're summarizing it by customer and sub summarizing it by product range. 
displaying profit against invoices. And again, we've only got a couple of pages here. This would be probably hundreds of pages long. Um, but you can look again, if we look at the, um, let's find a good example. Here we are, we've got COLL01. Okay, so for that customer, bear in mind, we're looking at profits by month. These are the product ranges they're buying. Uh, as you can see, managed services profit has stopped. No, no managed services there. Um, pretty consistent spend on managed services plant, pretty consistent spend on paper. Okay. And it, I say it just gives you an overview of what they're buying. What it doesn't do is tell you what they're not buying. We'll come to that a bit later. But within the 12 months, that is telling you every product range that that customer is buying. If you if you had a um, if you wanted to do a particular um, campaign, then, as I say, I will show you something later. But you can very quickly scan through and identify customers that aren't buying from a particular product range, for example. OK, let's go on to another one. So this one's a spreadsheet. So some of the um, some of the reports are designed to run as spreadsheets. Some are PDF. OK, so what's this one? This is customer top items by each customer. So if you ran this, this would produce you an enormous great spreadsheet listing every customer, showing the top items that that customer buys. And you can specify the number of top items, the maximum number of top items that you want to show. So in this case, I believe we probably selected 10. And so it's showing the top 10. The reason there's only five, some of these customers only bought five products. So that's that's why it's not showing a full list. But what it, again, it just allows you to scan through, look at look at your customers and see what the, the, the important products are to them. OK, and it's showing you the pack, the quantity they bought, how many times they bought it, the average price and then the value, profit and margin. OK. Next one. This one's really interesting, not very heavily used, but I really do like this one. If it opens, bear with me. OK, this takes a little bit of explaining uh, and it's a little bit of a strange report. It was written um, specifically for a dealer uh, who didn't mind us sharing it. OK, so. What are we looking at on the left hand side here? These are all all products. And it's showing ranging group and as a company, as a dealership, these are the top products you are selling. OK, so again, we've chopped it to 100. So we have said, what's what is our top 100 products we are selling? And in, if you look at the date at the top here, it's in the last full quarter. OK, so this is top 100 products. OK, that's nice and simple. So you how many you sold, the frequency, how many customers um, have bought it. So as you can see, some of these have been uniquely bought by only one customer. And what we can what we what we can do is see what the total value, profit and margin of these products are. So these aren't good examples. I think these are perhaps service items, so they're probably not great examples to be in this report. But anything from column M to the right is looking at one customer. So when you run this report, it says to you, well, what customer do you want to compare to your top company products? So you put a customer code in. And it will tell you how that customer that you have chosen is supporting your top 100 products. So. As you can see, this customer that we use, and again, probably not the greatest example. This customer is only buying four of the top 100 products that you are selling. OK, that's what this report means. So you put a customer code in and it tells you how well they're supporting your top 100 products as a company. And what we have is how many product, how many have they bought? So they bought 34. You sold 539. So they bought 34 of those. They bought it 13 times. You've sold it 114 times. They've spent 839 pounds. You've overall spent 12,100. The value, they bought 6.9% of the overall sales of that product. The profit is 379. They've given you 7.8% of the profit for that product. And the margin for the customer is 47%. Your overall margin is 42%.
So basically for any customer, you can see how they're supporting your top products. The other, the beauty of this is you could actually have restricted this to your top 100 paper products, for example, and see how any customer is supporting your top 100 paper products or janitorial products or catering products. So an extremely flexible report, um, not used anywhere near enough, very powerful um, report. So if, if, if we've completely confused you on this one, please contact us and we will take you through it on your data and you'll fully understand it. Um, as I say, I, I really like this report, but no one uses it. And that's why it's uh, being shown today. OK, something a bit simpler. Low margin orders. OK, so why is this here? Well, this is kind of a bit more of an operational report. This can be run at any time, of course, or we can schedule it and just send it to you at the end of the day. It can be sp spread across the whole month, if you like. What does it do? Well, you put the threshold in, so you might want orders below 10%. That's your choice. So this will simply list all sales orders below a 10% margin. OK, and it will send it to who you want or you can run it on demand. Um, very simple report, but we, none of us want to work at 10% margin or 5% or margin or make a loss. You can put 0%. It will show you all your loss making orders. And so what, what you need to do is just ask us to assist you in setting this up as a schedule report if you're interested. Just as an extension of this, low margin lines. Exactly the same, but we're not looking at the whole order now. We're just looking at lines that fall below a certain margin. OK, so once again, this can be scheduled, sent to you a couple of times a day, once a day, once a month. And really, it just allows you to have a quick look at lines that you're going through below margin. Um, like for example, this one, this one's gone through at minus seven pounds. So why is that? You go off and investigate it. It tells you the um, tells you the order number there. So go and have a look, see what's gone wrong. Maybe maybe it's on a contract. Maybe you have to sell it below cost. Who knows? But at least you'll know about it. Okay. Right. So I want to um, just do the last one in the management reports. And this is um, the reactivated accounts um, report. So there's been, so far, we have been, had no report for reactivated accounts. Um, there is a reason for that. And it's because it's incredibly complicated to define what a reactivated account is, because everybody has a different view of it. OK, so we do tell you about new business that goes dormant. That we cover well. But what we don't cover is reactivated existing accounts that go dormant. So we've attempted to do this. And, and again, this is one this is one where you're going to have to call in um, if you want if you want to talk about this and if you have a very different interpretation of it. OK, so get, get your heads around this one. Read this at the top. Reactivated now dormant customers. What does that mean? So. You've reactivated them. Well done. Fantastic. So they were a customer. They've gone dead. You've got them back and you've lost them again. That's what that means. OK, so let's re read the sentence underneath. Established customers with at least six months concurrent inactivity since September 2023. So what's that mean? That means in the last year they have spent at least six months not buying something from you. OK, in a row. So they've been inactive for six months in the last year. OK, let's carry on with the sentence. Who spent in July 2024, but not in August 2024. Whoa. OK, what does that mean? So you've got them back. You they bought something in July. Fantastic. Happy days. And you've lost them again. That's what that's what this report is telling you. So we could have just said, oh, well done. These are the ones you've got back. Well, that's not really a lot of good, is it? We don't really want to tell you good news. Vantage Point wants to tell you bad news. Vantage Point wants to make you do things that can make a difference. So telling you how wonderful you are getting these accounts back. Yeah, that's good. You might want to reward your, um, your account managers for that. And we can facilitate that in this report. But much better to know the ones that you've got back and then you've lost again. OK, and that's what this report does. So we would recommend that this is run a few days after the end of the month when you've done all your invoicing. And what it will do, it will tell you all the customers that 
that spent in spent two months ago that have been reactivated but didn't spend last month and you can get on the phone and chase them so if we look at look at the numbers here we've also got the first order date so you can see when this was first ever a customer so this was the first ever a customer in august 2020 and as you can see they spent nothing through the month until july and then they've gone dormant again so they might be who knows that might be a school or something it might be a one-off and i'm not saying every every single uh, account on here there's a story behind it but we typically find with these sort of reports out of 10 there'll be one where there's a story and you need to ring them up and you can get it back so like this one a another company anonymous data by the way um as you can see they, they came back to life didn't make a huge amount of profit from them um but worth a phone call because they've gone dead in august okay one here two months spend in a row and gone dead but no they've spent nothing this one here look they spent in november and december then they had one two three four five six that was convenient six months off and came back in july yeah and then they've gone again so this is our interpretation of reactivated accounts i i can't see your faces unfortunately and you're probably all throwing your hands up in horror saying that's not how we interpret reactivated accounts and we have really struggled to find the middle ground on this report and this is kind of where we've landed okay so we'd be interested in your feedback on this one okay um that's that's the new report by the way so that will be ready um ready to use uh tomorrow and um we will um we will be sending an email out to say new report alert and we'll show we show you where it is um we we are considering doing a webinar on this one um just to explain the usage of it so if anyone is interested um please contact us if there's a good good level of interest we will we will do a little uh, webinar but i've written this report to be fairly flexible so i could change without too much work i could change what we define as reactivated so we could say there's only 3 months dormant instead of 6 it's possible to do that so um but again you know talk to us and we'll see what we can do to help you out okay um the next one I'd like to come on to is a little marketing report. Very, very simple to use, um, quite basic, but also extremely powerful. OK, so this report allows you to define up to six product ranges. And it will show you the spend of each product range against each customer. So down down the left hand side here is a list of all all the customers and in the case we look at the dates at the top here this is in june so the first half of this report columns a to d are simply customers with spend and last transaction date in the date range that you define so it will list basically list all of your spending customers that's great good nice and simple what it does next is it will list the spend against each product range that you define in the report. You can have six. We do have a special one that has up to 10. But we don't typically release that because it's it's more um, it's a lot more than people would want in most cases. OK, but so what what we're looking at here, if you imagine if you ran this for real, this would probably be well, this would be one for every one of your customers. So this would be you know two or three hundred rows long. It sorts it by total sales, puts your biggest customer at first. So what can we do with this? Well, it has filters, so we can say, show everyone that spent nothing on paper. Well, there you go. That's all your customers that haven't bought paper. Extremely fast gap analysis. We can say, oh, let me do a stupid one. We can say, show me that haven't bought paper, that have bought, Printers, fax, copier supplies. So this one has bought toners, but no paper, which is strange. If you did that across four or 500 customers, you'd have a lot more. We can sort by this column. It's showing our biggest paper spenders. OK, um, we can show. I don't know why you want to do this or oh, you would. That's we can show everyone that's bought paper not bought toners just those so it's very very flexible if i go back to if i take all the sorts out
sort by this again. Long way around. You'll see at the end here, we have the contact details for each customer. So we've obviously put our false ones in here. But if you filter this report down to just the ones you want, you can then create an email email list of them here. Okay. So it's it's just a very simple way of getting information about who spent what um, across six different ranges. If we actually go to this report in vantage point, it actually goes way beyond this. Um, here it is. Log me up because I haven't used it. Let's come back to it. OK, so as you see, this is the date range we want to run the report for based on orders or invoices. And here's your, this is where you put your product ranges in here. If you only want to put one in, you just leave the word ignore for the rest. So it will just show you, it will just show you paper. You wouldn't get these columns. It'd just be paper sales and overall sales. Okay. But the beauty of this as well, it doesn't just work on product range. It can work on product group. So you could put in product groups, which is the next layer down. Or it can work on item codes. So you could actually put five different item codes in here. So instead of product ranges, it would be showing you know, code one, code two, code three, code four, code five. So let's say you have some very, very favorite paper codes. Put the five paper codes in across here and it will show you who's supporting those. And another little twist for this is order source. So if you put up to six different order sources in here, it will show you here the spread of what's coming in on the web, what's coming in via email, what's coming in on the phone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can then say, show me everyone that's spending nothing via the web, but ringing everything through. Um, so um, the the options for this are e enormous, and it's very useful, very simple. If you want training on it, just let us know. Okay, so. Um, and my last one. So this this goes a bit against the grain. This is a customer report. I know we said we're doing management. Um, we've always held this report back. We'll, it will be available tomorrow. Um, we've held it back because of resources that it took to run. Um, we have optimized it and we are now um, we are now happy to release it. Um, it's it's much lighter on its feet and it is a customer portal, customer overview, if you like, one stop shop, one view of a customer. Um, so this we pick lots of bits about a customer that you might want to know. And you can run this in three modes. So you can run this from the basis of profit. You can run this from a basis of sales or you can run this from a basis of something that you can put in front of your customer, because even the sales one has got sensitive information. So when you run it, and it is in the, it can be found in the customer report section, but not until tomorrow. And it's called customer portal. You simply put the account code in you want to run it for and select whether it's for profit, sales or customer facing. And you get three different versions. They're loosely similar, but um, they are, what they say okay so what have we got on here so in the key account statistics how old's the account well it's an over two year old account great established account this is based on the last 120 days everything i'm going to tell you how many web orders did they place naught oh dear 144 orders placed nothing on the web last order date 24th of the 9th well that's good that's yesterday 545 lines They've got five lines on back order with a £654 of back orders. Six low margin lines. Only 23% of what you sell to them has been on core. 37 loss lines and £121 lost in profit because of those lost lines. Um, again, I'm showing you demo data. So 
they've got 42 branches active out of 263. I don't know many. Um, I don't know many customers that have 263 branches. Um, however, if you saw that they had two branches active out of five, then that's that's perhaps more interesting. And they bought 299 unique products. OK, so it's just a little overview there. Product range summary. So you can see what, what they've been buying and whether they're trending downwards. So they're trending down on furniture, computer hardware, mailroom. And these are the ones they're trending up. And they've used 24 product ranges in all. Top items. So there's the top top five items that you've sold to this customer. And this is where it gets a little bit more exciting. All the statistics over here. So based on the last three months plus month to date, this is the profit per order. So there's 15, 15 orders have been naught to 10 pounds profit. So it basically is, it's just showing you a breakdown of how many orders have been placed within those profit bands. So you see that actually the biggest amount of orders have been placed in the higher profit bands, which is good, which is what you want. So three, and this is the percent of orders that have been placed in these bands. Um, you've got the total profit for each band. So for the 10 to 25 pound profit band, you made 521 pound. OK, and then there's your totals at the bottom um, with your total profit. So you've got 147, um, 147 orders. OK, um, this is your average order profit by period. So you can see that um, March to May was good, but your order profit has dropped from June to September. And there's the counts of the orders and the total profit. Period comparisons. This is good. So if we look at the right hand side here, uh, we've got this year versus last year. Last year is always in the gray, the gray boring color. And this year is in the more brighter color. So we're, we're slightly up on, on profit overall for this customer. And we can look at the quarterly figures. So we're actually down in the most recent quarter in profit. But the other three quarters previous, we were up in profit. And these are the baselines for the profit. OK, so delivery and environmental. This takes a little bit of getting getting your head around, but it's really good. So since the 1st of the 6th, 2024, you've made 139 deliveries to this customer. OK, if you raise 10 delivery notes and deliver them to the same customer on the same day, that's counted as one delivery. So we don't just simply count the delivery notes. We we count, we batch, we, we group those together and we, we just count how many times effectively your your van is taking a delivery to a to a location. OK, so this customer has eight point four six deliveries a week. We we estimate um, you can change this. You can define this if you can be bothered to calculate it. But we um, we estimate um, one point two kilograms of carbon dioxide per delivery. So that's one hundred and sixty six kilograms of carbon dioxide. This customer has used caused through all of those deliveries. OK. So that's 139 deliveries. So what is the purpose of this? What we're trying to do is demonstrate that if they place orders less frequency, frequently, maybe order twice a week or once a week, it shows you how much carbon dioxide that side can be saved. So if they reduce their deliveries down to 104, they'll save 41 kilograms. If they reduce them down to 69, it's 83 kilograms. If they reduce them to 34, it's 121. And this is the most important one. If they de if they reduce to one delivery per week, they'll save 147 kilograms of carbon dioxide. So it's something to talk about. So it stops you running around madly delivering every day. Um, and you, you would try to encourage them to lean more towards managed orders whereby they can place the orders all week, but you don't deliver them until the end of the week or something like that. So it's it's something to have a conversation about. Um, this is number of products used here. What percentage of the products are flagged as green and fair trade? OK. <clears throat> On to the next section, um, returns analysis. Again, demo data. You can have a re return reason. Ooh, what have I done there? You can have a return reason in the... Um, when you raise a return um, in this demo data, uh, it's not been filled in, but 
returns as a percentage of sales is 0.4%. That's very, very good. Typically, I see about 1%. Um, and the value of return is 142 pounds. And they have, um, that's the percent of the total of the return reason. So they're not assigned. 100% of the returns are not assigned in terms of the reason. And there are two lines. Okay. Um, Okay, so customer ranking. This um, this is telling you by profit where this customer is ranked. So this is your seventh biggest customer of 647. Last quarter, they were sixth. So they've gone down one. Same quarter last year, they were seventh. So they've not moved at all. So their average ranking is seventh. So it's a big customer. It's a good customer. Okay. Quotation statistics. So this is basically just saying the value of quotations raised and the value of quotations unconverted for the last 30 days. And on to gap analysis. So this is a good customer. They they buy a lot of um, a lot of different product ranges. So key ranges with no spend, naught. So they buying every one of your key ranges. There's six key product ranges which you can define in, in Prima Vantage, and they are buying every one of them. And they are buying 26 of 65 ranges. Again, this is demo data. There's a lot of spurious ranges in this. Typically, ranges are you know, between 30 and 40 different product ranges. Um, so it's just giving you an overview of different uh, ranges that the customer's um, buying. And as I say, we are, um, we are launching this report tomorrow. Re instructions will come out very simple to run. Um, so you won't have access to it right now. Um, but uh, hopefully you'll find it um, quite useful. And if you have any questions, obviously just get in touch. And Chris will be very happy to um, very happy to um, help with uh, any queries that you have. So um, I'm I'm going to stop there. I think I've waffled on long enough. Um, just to summarise, we've covered um, company and brushed on marketing reports um, today and introduced a couple of uh, couple of new reports for you. And um, as I say, um, it would be a pleasure to speak to you if you have any queries. Um, if there's anything in the system that we can help you with, then please do reach out. So um, I'm just going to um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. I'm going to hand over to um, our our president, uh, Ian Buckley. Our, our the, the figurehead of the company. And um, he, he's just going to thank you all for coming along. And um, I will uh, I hope to speak to you all soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Terry. That was uh, excellent. I hope you all um, all enjoyed that and found it insightful. Um, those new reports are absolutely fantastic and ever so crucial um, if we're going to get ahead um, in this marketplace. So, um, why are we um in why why are we putting on these webinars and you know why are we continuing to develop vantage in the prima solutions um to 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 ha help answer this you know obviously um we look closely at the marketplace we look closely at how how our dealers are performing and how the dealers um you know the challenges that you're facing as a as a, as a collective market um, and we feel, you know, obviously, if we can react to that and we can provide you with the solutions, then we can uh, ourselves, you know, kind of uh, share the success with you. So we've been doing a bit of a, a bit of a research recently into, you know, the customer base and, and the market. And um, at the moment, um, this is basically a, a report that I thought you might find quite interesting. This is basically how the how the industry is performing this year versus last year. Um, a lot of the uh, evidence you find is anecdotal, so we decided to actually kind of dig into the the big data to kind of find out a little bit more. Um, one of the comments I've kind of heard quite a lot lately is the industry has been quite flat. And do you know what? <laughs> It's a hundred percent spot on. Um, this was last year where we enjoyed um, some peaks early in the year, but some bigger troughs, um, and then a slightly better summer, um, a decent autumn, and obviously the inevitable drop off towards Christmas. 
this year's been a lot flatter with a little bit of peak midsummer, a bigger dip in August, but we're hoping to, um, th th these are kind of predicted based on, on last year and a little formula that um, we come up with. So not entirely accurate, but again, we're hoping for, to see a kind of a bigger uplift. And th this, this is based on, on dealer spend, not sales. So sales would look slightly different, but it gives you an indication of uh, if dealers are buying this, then it's likely to mirror in in the sales. So um, with with the you know kind of reporting webinars that Terry's put on over the last three weeks, I hope that you use Vantage to your to your advantage and help you you know kind of maximise um, what you sell. Um, during this kind of uh, this period that, you know, we expect to see some anticipated growth um, in the, the kind of final final quarter and prepare you for obviously December, um, which, you know, it's generally due to the um, reduced trading days because of the Christmas holidays and close downs, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, I just thought, I'd, uh, I'd share that with you. Uh, you might want to look at your own business and see what your line looks like. If you're seeing anything different, um, please do tell us, you know, um, success leaves clues. And, you know, if you can tell us what's been successful for you, um, that's an area we can, as a software house, focus our solutions on helping you enjoy more success in that area. Um, which brings me very, very nicely on to... Um, the next little thing I wanted to share with you. Um, so um, on Friday, the 27th of December, uh, September, this Friday uh, at 10 a.m., myself and uh, Steve Dennis will be hosting um, a customer focus group. So in the customer focus group, we want to share with you the latest ERP enhancements. So you'll see what we've been working on, the new features we've been bringing on to you in Prima. And also um, a much anticipated update on our brand new product, Prima Engage, our CRM, our, our CRM um, customer um, focused, um, customer focused CRM tool, uh, which is designed to improve your sales sales workflow and obviously identify those opportunities. So the great news is with uh, with Prima Engage is. We've actually released it this week internally, so it's not just a you know kind of theory anymore and a collection of um, screens that don't fit together. It's actually a working product that we've 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 uh, actually released internally, and we're going to have our sales team working on in Prima in alpha mode. So we want to share the update with you on that tomorrow. So it's going to be really exciting. Oh, it's tomorrow, Friday. <laughs> it's going to be really exciting um, to to be able to show you that. So please, you know, kind of don't miss that. Um, we're also going to be uh, asking you, um, what do you guys want to see in the software uh, based on your experience? You know, the dealers are the ones out there at the coalface using the software, seeing the trends in the market, reacting to your customers and the changing demands of your customers. What what can we do as a software house to to assist you to facilitate you and to enable you to take those take those opportunities so um it's a chance for for your voice to be heard and for you to tell us you know what direction um we need to be you know kind of taking um as part of our future roadmap um we do have some idea and we have we, we do have some you know kind of roadmaps in place but obviously you know the market changes and your voice is really important there so um yeah, I'd love to hear your ideas on that. And and finally, just a general Q&A session. You know, if there's anything you want to get off your chest, anything you want to ask, um, you know, kind of any uh, any answers that we might be able to help with, it'll be a chance for you to um, voice your uh, questions um, in the forum at the end. Um, so really hope to see you there. And um, finally, just to close off on, on the vantage point, um, I said earlier, uh, success leaves clues. Um, we, when we were doing our like uh, analysis, um, we actually saw that 67% of the uh, growing customers, the customers recording growth year on year, 67% um, of them actually utilise Prima Vantage. 
So, um, you know, it's, it's a great product. It's a great tool. Um, as you can see, there's so much more beneath the, the dashboards that you can be utilizing. So please do, you know, spend some more time investigating that and come into us with any questions. And if you want any extra training on Prima Vantage, then just give Chris or Terry a shout or shout up um, someone in the support team will pass on your query because be absolutely uh, delighted to, to kind of help you with that. Okay, that's, that's everything from me. Thank you very much and hope to see you uh, on Friday. Thank you, Terry, for a fantastic series. And a few questions did come up. Um, we will be releasing the videos of the three sessions, so you'll be able to watch those back um, at, in your own time for any, any refreshment of, of the content. Okay, that's it from us. Thank you and have a great day. Oh, my God.